Ahmed Abu Ali was born in Houston, Texas in March of 1981. Three years later, his family moved to join the Muslim community in Falls Church, Virginia, where he started off his elementary education at the Islamic Saudi Academy. As soon as he started high school, Ahmed became actively involved in the youth programs at Dar al Hijra Islamic Center. Ahmed especially enjoyed being a counselor at the summer day camp where he loved teaching and playing with young children. Whether it was helping the children memorize Qur'an with perfect tajweed, or teaching them a new sport to help them grow strong and healthy, Dar al-Hijra could always count on Ahmed being there with his generous heart, wide smile, and strong leadership skills to help shape a brighter future for the local Muslim youth. In 1999, Ahmed graduated from the Islamic Saudi Academy and was the class valedictorian. He then enrolled in the engineering program at the University of Maryland in College Park. In the spring of 2000, Ahmed accepted a scholarship offer at the Islamic University of Medina and withdrew from the University of Maryland in order to pursue an education in Islamic studies. In the meantime, the tragic events of 9-11 occurred and the world froze as it witnessed the worst terrorist attack to take place on U.S. soil. The Bush administration soon launched its war on terror and scrambled to find a scapegoat to justify its actions. It began by cracking down on the Muslim community, raiding its homes and organizations, implanting secret agents to infiltrate mosques, and arresting a group of Muslim youth in Virginia. In June of 2003, Washington ordered the Saudi Mabahith to arrest Ahmed. On June 8, 2003, Ahmed was arrested while taking a final exam at the Islamic University of Medina based on that order. Right when he was taking his final exams, he was actually in the final exam room and uh, Saudi security officers stormed in and they arrested him. He was then taken to a solitary cell in Medina and flown the next day to the notorious al hair prison in Riyadh, where he was repeatedly tortured into submission and forcibly coerced into confession against his free will. This coerced false confession was prepared by and obtained under the direction of his Saudi torturers and subsequently given to the American government. In this confession tape, Ahmed would repeatedly turn to his torturers who were videotaping him as he merely read the prepared written confession and ask, quote, Tamam, meaning, is this good enough for you? All day and throughout the night, Ahmed was tortured until, broken and desperate, he submitted to his tormentor's requests and confessed to conspiring to assassinate President Bush. Six weeks later, and only after his confession, Ahmed was finally allowed to mingle and pray with his fellow inmates. He was finally allowed to make his first call home to speak with his family, who were frantic with worry about their beloved son and brother. While Ahmed was in Saudi custody, the FBI attended and actively participated in the interrogation process. The extracted video of the pre-rehearsed confession ended up being the only evidence during his trial, despite the clear evidence that it was obtained only as a result of torture. While Ahmed was in al haya prison, the FBI and CIA exchanged emails stating that if he came back, they will have to institute active surveillance against him, but not arrest him. The FBI also made a statement to the Washington Post and to a friend of the Abu Ali family that the FBI had no interest in the continued detention of Ahmed. Just a few weeks later, however, Attorney General John Ashcroft pulled Ahmed's file to make a political statement through the fabricated case. Government agencies, including the Department of State, Department of Justice, the White House, and a congressional delegation, denied having any knowledge of the case, any interest in Ahmed, or any involvement in his case after the FBI had interrogated him through the Saudis. What I can tell you publicly is that, um, as you know, he is, he is uh, um, in, incarcerated in Saudi Arabia. After these government agencies insisted on their lies to the family, Ahmed's parents had to force the government to speak by filing a lawsuit in the federal court of Washington, D.C. Government lawyers denied any involvement or interest in Ahmed's arrest, detention, or interrogation despite the deep involvement of the FBI, CIA, and Secret Service in the case. These three intelligence agencies, according to court and agency records that were uncovered through discovery, 
never discuss trying Ahmed or charging him. Instead, they merely wished to observe him after the Saudis released him. While these agencies were denying involvement, the Saudi government was beseeching them to pick him up since they were only holding him at the behest of the Americans. A person who's arrested and detained for 17 months, wouldn't you think if there's anything against him that he would be charged by now? Abu Ali's family is suing the federal government. They're convinced the U.S. asked the Saudis to arrest him and could secure his release as well. The Saudis are ready to release Ahmed any time if the U.S. government ordered to release him. In court papers, the Justice Department insists the Saudis are acting on their own. But relatives believe Abu Ali is languishing in prison because U.S. officials are too embarrassed to let him come home. They continue to keep him in Saudi Arabia simply because they're afraid to admit that they made a mistake, that they probably had somebody tortured for no reason, and that person is a U.S. citizen. On December 16, 2004, after Ahmed's family sued the government, Judge John Bates of the D.C. District Court ruled in favor of the family's right and ordered the government to release the documents from the government agencies that showed any level of government involvement in Ahmed's arrest and detention. The government requested some time in order to respond to the judge, but instead of complying, the government refused to release any information to the judge and furthermore falsified a list of charges against Ahmed and brought him from Saudi Arabia. In February of 2005, Ahmed was brought to Alexandria, Virginia to a courtroom overflowing with family and friends all anxious to set eyes on him and show their continuing love and support for the Abu Ali family. He was charged with six counts and held without bond. Ali's parents, who have fought for months to get their son returned from Saudi Arabia, where he was arrested 20 months ago, say he's no terrorist. While our president is going over half of the world, talking about establishing democracy in, another, in other parts of this world, he needs to come and watch over Justice Department. And in court today, his lawyer claimed Ali was tortured by Saudi authorities and could show the judge the scars to prove it. I am somewhat saddened by the thought that it's come to the position now that our government apparently is prepared to use evidence that's been produced by torture in a criminal case in the United States of America.